Hey guys, this is Brandon at the Edge Pro and just wanted to talk about replacing the switch on this little Oster T finisher trimmer. Um, that can be a fairly tricky task. Um, we have done a video on this in the past and it has a good amount of views on it. Uh, but with the, with the improvement of technology and graphics and whatnot, we just wanted to make it a little better, see if we could make things a little, little more clear for you. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is take this clipper apart. And uh, the only thing holding it together is these two screws here. So the first thing we're going to do is take those screws out. All right, so I got the screws out on this clipper, and this clipper is gonna try to be a bugger on us. Almost every other clipper has the long screw in the front and the short screw in the back. And on this one, wouldn't you know it, the long is in the back and the short is in the front. Uh, so exactly backwards of what is normal. And then another thing that's different than most clippers is that all of the guts inside the clipper are in the top housing versus the bottom housing. Um, so a couple things that are a little bit different on this clipper right off the bat if you're experienced in working on clippers uh, Those may come as some surprises to you and if you're not experienced on working on clippers um, surprise so next thing I do is I'll take the Hanger bail off it just goes in those two little holes there and then the uh, field coil and the cord are all together like that and so those can just come off nicely. Now, something I want to highlight that I'm doing right now is I'm holding this button in the down position with my thumb. Because once we take this off, that button's gonna go flying and there's three components and where they came from and all of that can be difficult. So uh, that's what this video is for, but just wanted to highlight that that's what's happening. And then I'm gonna pull this this whole assembly comes off of, it sits on the post in here. And we'll talk about that assembly when we go to put it back together. And so here's our switch that we have in here. So if you pretend that my finger is the motor or the field coil that's sitting here to see how this switch works. When you go up, the spring pulls it down. And when you go, so, whoops, let's see here, there we go. So when you go to turn it into the on position, it makes contact and when you go to the off position, it goes off. Um, so that's how it works, but they didn't give us anything to hold these components together. So as soon as I let go of this finger, it's going to disengage the spring. So we'll take a little bit more time here to look at the three components that we have in here. We have this black piece here, we call the switch actuator. And that's the part that your finger actually touches on the outside of the clipper. And then we have this little spring right here. And that is what spring loads the switch. And then this piece right here has our contacts in it. And the way that that looks in the clipper is these are the contacts here, these two shiny pieces on the motor. And so when you turn that switch on, it makes contact to those two pieces like that and then comes off. So that's what's happening. So to get it all back together, first thing we're gonna do is we need to lay our contact. There's a little post in the housing. Let's see if I can get the light, there it is. This post right here, what we need to do is put that on the post. This is a new clipper. They typically have quite a bit of grease in there. Um, I will occasionally put a little bit of grease in these mo in these spots where it, it is sliding. Um, it's super important that you make sure it's a dielectric grease. Uh, that means that it's not gonna conduct electricity. Uh, we don't want anybody getting hurt or electrocuted. Uh, but overall, the grease is not vital to be there. Um, so if you're not comfortable with it, just don't worry about it and the clipper will work fine. Um, but yeah, these new ones come pretty loaded with it. And there's quite a bit in there. All right. So the next thing we have is the spring. Now if we look at this spring, let me get this out of the way. So there we go. If you look at the spring, we have this side that kind of has a stair step look to it. And then you have this side over here that just has a 90 degree angle. And what we have to do here is we're gonna take 
the side with the stair step look to it. And it goes in this tiny little hole right in the middle, right there. And then we want it to lay where that 90 degree angle is faced up towards the ceiling. So if I turn it sideways, you can see that spring down in there, faced up towards the ceiling. And now we're going to put the actuator in. All right, so I have to use the table as kind of my third hand here for putting this actuator in. But if we look at this actuator real quick, we should see that hole right there. And it has a little cup for you on this side. And so what I do is I use my left hand, disregard the finger there, I had an accident. Use, but I'm using that finger there to push down on the spring up here in this part. And what that does is it actually raises, as I push down on it, it actually raises that 90 degree angle up a little bit. Otherwise, if you let it, if you just let go of it, it kind of falls down. So as I push down on it, it raises it. And then what I need to do is line up that 90 degree angle spot with that little hole that I showed you in the actuator and when you do you can see you'll see the actuator poke through just like that so let's see if I can bring it up a little bit closer even so the actuator comes in and we poke through the hole just like that see that little pin light coming through so once we have that done now what we need to do is while holding pressure down, I have this 90 degrees to where it needs to be. I'm in the housing like this and I need to be over here. And so what we're gonna do is I'm pushing down on both my left index finger and the switch so that that spring stays in place. And then I'm just rotating that switch around until it snaps down. You could hear that little snap onto the side. Once it's on the side, as long as I keep that finger tight over there, holding it in the off position, it'll hold together for me. If I lift up on it, it's gonna come unspr unsprung again. And just like that, you can see it came unsprung. So we'll line it up one more time here. So once you do it a couple times, once it, once you get it that first time, it really does, the feel comes in really nicely um, and it'll make sense to you. Um, but getting it that first time can be a little bit frustrating. Um, so we've found that people have enjoyed seeing this video. So now I'll stop messing around here. We're gonna readjust the camera and we'll go ahead and talk about the rest of the pieces as we put it back together. All right. so. Next, we're going to put this, this is called the armature back in. These two springs that are on the on this side and then also on this side may fall out. Um, just put them back in. The way for them to be is where this starting point that's right here needs, there needs to be one on each side because what those springs do is they center the armature and then the field uh, and the, the magnetic pull of the field will swing it both directions. Um, and if we look at this sideways on the side profile here, we have, you can see this white post on this side and then no white post on that side. The no white post is going to be down. So we lay it in there, but it's not going to go all the way because that spring is in our way. So the first thing we do is I'm going to tilt it that way so I can get it down a little bit. And then I'm going to tilt it back the other way. so I can get the rest of it in. So now that armature is held centered. It can move both directions, which will end up moving our blade both directions. Once that snaps down, you can finally take your hand off of that switch. So not a bad idea to spend a little time getting the armature and the springs and everything put together because you're gonna have to do it with one hand um, when, once you put the switch in. So once that's in, now we're gonna go ahead and 
put our motor back in, or our field coil back in. And it just barely fits right in the spot made for it, but it does. Sometimes you have to pivot the front in first and then bring the back down in like that. And then the cord fits in. There's a little spot down here in the housing and the cord fits into that. And then I like to kind of make sure that those are spread apart enough for that screw to be able to get through. But be very careful spreading it because let's see here, if we look right there, that wire is getting pretty thin. Same for up here, see how thin that wire is? And we don't want to break that. Um, so don't go crazy about spreading it, but we just want to spread that a little bit because we want our screw to be able to come through. And then we are going to put our hanger bale back in the two little holes on either side of the cord. And then put the bottom housing back on. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, long screw in the back, which is gonna be opposite of most other clippers we work on. Short screw in the front. test our work, make sure it has a nice smooth flow to the switch, telling us that everything, the spring stayed, everything's moving nice and free, and that's gonna be a, a tool that's gonna feel good in your hand. And, um, and that's how we do the switch repair on this clipper. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you liked what you saw, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, leave us any comments. If you have any other questions, we'd love to um, be able to answer those as well as any other ideas for videos in the future. Thank you.